Hello there. Welcome to the Basic Buskers Guitar School Lesson 3. Obviously I'm going to give you a new chord and cover a few things. I'm going to talk about capos. Oh, capos, that's a capo. And keys, why you might need a capo. We'll cover that in a minute. And also, how long are my nails? getting too long you really want to keep your nails short I know that's going to offend some people who like to have you know pretty long nails and varnish them and, and look really stylish and, that, and that's cool but you might can want to consider for a little while at least as you're learning getting those nails out of the way and really if you ask any uh, serious guitarist that they will keep their nails short on the left hand or I should say on the chord hand because of course you can play it the other way around um, <clears throat> if you're left-handed you might choose to do that but on the other hand you might want to have them long now I tend to break them because I, I, I get up to you know DIY type things and I catch a, a nail but so these aren't exactly beautiful by any means but you can see that there is certainly that that one is quite a bit longer than, than average and it's good for plucking the strings so keys hmm what is a key well you'll notice that some of the chords that we're going to cover over the coming times will work well together and some really don't work well together and so a key is a kind of way of bunching music together um, I don't really want to get too technical really the point that I want to make and what what's useful is if you want to change key it you might have to move up the fretboard and add a kind of a strap as it were that is going to block off some of the notes so you can put it there there wherever you need to put it to change the pitch well that's another word isn't it pitch the the height of the notes the chords that you're going to be playing oh i should mention that capos come in all shapes and sizes this is one particular uh, brand it's a shub uh, c1 um, for general guitar use uh, if you're buying a capo uh, make sure it's going to fit your guitar the thing really about keys is that you can change the way a song works for a particular voice so that if you if you find it hard to reach a note you can change the key for that that can be a useful thing and it can change the sound obviously you know if you're putting it quite high up on the fretboard say here you know that's going to really change the sound so if you're playing you know the the, the e minor that we know that sounds very different than where we played it before it's a different pitch but it's also you know being higher it kind of changes the the feel of it so the thing about um, keys is that as I say there are certain chords that work together and certain that don't so if you start trying to write songs and you find chords that really go together they'll probably be in the same key and if you find chords that don't they probably won't be is that enough about keys? I think so, and enough about capos. Let's get on to that chord, shall we? So it's A minor, which is shaped like this. I'll give you that chord chart so you can read it. So it's quite like the E minor, but different. Ooh, and we've got another chord, haven't we? D2. Which probably brings me neatly onto the song, which is You're Not the One by Sheryl Crow and Stevie Nicks. Nearly forgot there again. Um, how many times have I done this? This is ridiculous. Anyway, uh, in order to play that, and the reason why I wanted to introduce the capo is that it's actually in a slightly higher key than the chords that you've got will fit. Um, and what we need to do is need to put it on the first fret. So just going to do that, and then there's a sort of thing at the back. So you, that bit sort of clips on like that. That makes sense. I'm going to hold it completely different, like that bit clips on. 
So it goes like this. With the A minor. Late last night I told you. Oh, we've got to change before we get to the told you. To the D2. Told you. I cannot do this. I cannot hold you. And again, slow down <laughs> enough so that if you have to do it, Oh, wait, hold on, where the fingers, right, um, yeah, let me see, yeah, yeah, and you're positioned. Late last night, I, oh, let me see, get the, told you. That'll do, won't it? Don't, don't rush it, don't make it hard on yourself. The thing is, yeah, it wants to be fun, doesn't it? And you'll find that there is this kind of tedious bit where you're going to have to learn a few chords. You're going to have to put up with some buzzing while your muscles are getting used to actually making those chord shapes and making them work. There is going to be a little bit of drudgery. But if you just do three or four minutes every day for, I don't know, five out of seven days, something like that, maybe six tops, um, give yourself a day off at least a week then that's going to be so much better than if you do an hour's practice on a Saturday morning. That is just not good because it's you're not really giving it a chance to bed in and in fact what could be bedding in is bad habits and things that aren't working. So, yeah, just make it easy on yourself. And next time I'm going to show you how that song, we're going to do that song again but we're going to do a little tweak to it. Keep practicing and I'll see you then.